Hello, 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 everybody. Lori here from Unique in the Creek. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well and is recovering from their festivities yesterday, if my American friends. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful day. Everybody was safe. Um, I know there was a tragedy yesterday, which is so sad. I don't understand what's going on in this world. So say hello when you come in. Hello, Joanne, Nancy, Norma. Hi, Norma. Hello, hello, all my friends. Okay. Hi from the UK, Victoria. Welcome. What are you still doing up? <laughs> um, I'm going to put together this kit. Um, now, I don't, we did add some more kits today. Hello, everybody. We did add some more kits today of this. Um, we may have, I'm not sure if they're all sold out. I didn't check before I went on the web, uh, on the live here. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Lynn. Hi, everybody. Um, but this, I made this wreath last year, and everybody loved, loved, loved it and kept saying, please make a kit. So I was listening to you guys this year. So we've already sold 200 of these kits. They are sold out. Like I said, we just added uh, a few more today. I think there was 24 maybe. Um, and I'm going to see if I can add a little bit, see if I can get some more stuff in for August. Uh, because it is um, really, really. Hi, Tom Hutton. How are you? Hi, Tina Kelly. Thanks for joining me. Oh, it's only 9 p.m. there? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's 4 o'clock here. Yeah. See, heat index 114. Oh, I, you know, guys, I was in um, Florida, Mexico, and Bahamas the, last, the past week, and I swear, I, I was melting. Like, literally, the fat was melting off me, and you could see the pools of fat on the cement <laughs> coming from my thighs. <laughs> it was so hot. Um, and then I come home, and, and you know, you, you, when you get back to your room and everything, you crank the air conditioning because you're so hot and everything. So I think I didn't do good for myself because it's cold here and I, now I think I'm getting a cold. I think I'm getting sick from being hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, right? Oh, I tell you, I don't know how you people in the South do it. I really don't. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. And I suppose Jackie's watching too. Hi, both of you. Maya. Anyways, okay, this is a really, really fun wreath, like I said. Uh, it is a kit so in the kit and you can buy these separately um, you may not be able to buy you know the mesh but we do have other distributors distributors that may have it this is an orange snowdrift border stripe mesh that is what it's called orange border stripe snowdrift mesh okay um, and I, we're going to be using this really cute pumpkin ribbon. It's got sparklies in it. And this is a two and a half inch. And we're just going to be adding this to give our little pumpkin face guy a little color. Um, you know, we're also going to do a seven eighths inch bow. Or is this five eighths? I can't even read. Uh, 0.625 inches. And it is wired. So we do have this in store. We have all kinds of pumpkin um, ribbons in store. Um, you do get a unique in the creek squeegee in your kit. Yes, but if you don't have one and you didn't get a kit and you like to use the vinyls, most definitely get yourself one. It's so amazing for applying the vinyls. Okay. Um, in the kit, we got a piece of green cosmic mesh. It's a 24 inch piece. This will be the last thing we're going to use and I'll show you what we're going to use it for right at the end okay um, you get the character board you get the cute 
pumpkin vinyl. Isn't he cute? Um, and that's, oh, and your zip ties, clothes pins, and your wire cutters. Okay? So it's very, this wreath is very, very simple to make. Um, again, here's, I, I printed out what we're going to be using. And it will be on the actual tutorial when we post it on YouTube. So for row one, and it'll say a one on the character board here, row one, we're going to be using eight pieces of this orange straight mesh cut at 21 inches long. Okay. And we're also going to be having using eight pieces of the pumpkin ribbon. Okay, or on row one at 14 inches long. And we are going to do the same on row two. We're going to be doing eight pieces of mesh, 21 inches long, and eight pieces of pumpkin ribbon at 14 inches long. So the total you need is six pieces of 21 inch mesh, or six, 16, I'm sorry, and 16 pieces of the ribbon, the pumpkin ribbon. Alrighty. So we're going to get started, and like I said, I will post this at the beginning of our tutorial when I do edit it. So the only thing that's not included is you need some water just to help um, with putting your vinyl design on, and um, either a rotary cutter or a cutting mat or a 21-inch like ruler or something that you can measure out your ribbons at 21 in, or your mesh at 21 inches and your ribbon at 14. Okay. And I'm going to show you a bow at the end that you don't need a bow maker to, to do. So our little bow that's going to go on him, we are not going to use a bow maker. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is this up here, you'll see one and two and you'll see two holes divided in or chamfered. Uh, this is your hanging holes. Okay, so this is the top of your board. So I'm going to put the top up here just so I can apply my, my vinyl a little um, easier than doing it upside down. Okay, and what I like to do, and you don't have to, I line up the holes on one of the lines on my cutting mat to make sure it's completely straight. So you can see the cutting mat line through the holes. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is make sure there is no dog hair, glitter, fuzz, or anything on your board. I'm going to swipe it off. There we go. And I'm just going to give a, a little bit of a spritz of water. Now you can do this with a wet paper towel as well. Just wet a paper towel and dab it on. This just helps um, with the vinyl application. Should you not put it on straight, it's much easier to take it off. These are water permeable vinyl images. So you can take it off, put it on, take it off. After 24 hours, it will be set and it will stick right on there. Okay. So um, once it's cured, it's pretty well stuck on there. So what you're just going to do is, and this vinyl is available, um, if you really like it, it's vinyl uh, 667. So you can just type in 667 in the search or just pumpkin face vinyl, okay? We have a few cute pumpkin ones. What you're gonna do is you're just simply gonna peel it off the paper. And we are gonna put his little face right on the board. So we're gonna be making our frame and our sign one whole piece. So I'm just, kind of looking down my center, also looking between his eyes. Now, if you don't get it perfectly straight, it's not a big deal. Half the time I get it crooked and you really can't tell. Okay, and you're just kind of lining your vinyl up to the outside or the inside of each of the holes on row two. Okay, and then what I do is I just kind of hold it up and it's like, mm, yeah, that's straight. So I'm good, I'm ready to commit. So you're going to take your squeegee, okay, and you're going to start in the middle. Now, you, you can put a paper towel around uh, your squeegee to soak up some of the uh, 
the water, but this is felt and it'll dry fairly quick. But if you put paper towel over your squeegee, it'll just last a bit longer for you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start right in the center at about a 45 degree angle and just push upwards and you see the water squirting out. Now I didn't have to remove my vinyl because it's pretty, I got pretty got, you know, I've done a million of these so I can get them pretty right on. But you can, if you didn't put it on straight or you think it's too crooked, you can lift it off and do it again. Don't spray more water. You can just lift it off. Okay, and you're just going to keep going around until no more water squirting out. And this squeegee, I'm telling you, it gets rid of water bubbles, air bubbles, everything. It's, it's pretty fantastic because it's nice and stiff, right? If you have something that bends, it doesn't kind of glide along as nicely. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel and just wipe my image. Wipe it down. Just go around one more time to make sure everything is squirted out. It looks like we're good. Perfect. And that's what it looks like. So your frame and your sign are all one piece now. Now you can shift it around in the light and you'll see if there's any bubbles or anything. Um, if there is like little tiny water bubbles, it will dissipate over time. Yes, the vinyl does hold well. It is outdoor vinyl. Um, now, however, I've not tried it in this extreme heat <laughs> that you guys are having down in the South. So I cannot vouch for that. However, I have had them outside and we get about 90 here, so it holds up well and I've had it between doors. So, you know, in between a storm door, it gets really hot. So, and they've held up very well because it is outdoor vinyl. All right, we're ready to rock and roll here. So, this is now garbage. Okay, so we have to cut our mesh. I'll zoom out a bit. Okay, so we're gonna cut our mesh. We need 16 pieces at 21 inches. I've already pre-cut quite a bit of it, so we're not, we're not sitting here watching me cut mesh. <clears throat> so you're gonna roll out your mesh, making sure the bottom factory seam is lined up along something here so you, can, you know it's straight. And we're gonna cut it at 21 inches. Now you will have a little extra left over, um, hopefully, um, 21 inches, and we need 16 pieces. When you divide it into 360, um, you could cut it at 22 inches and that'll give you 360 exact, but I don't like to do exact because sometimes we don't get completely a whole 360 inches on a roll, okay? So I think I need to cut four pieces, four more pieces. I've already cut 12. And if this is a begin, if you're a beginner, this kit is, or the way to do this wreath is really quite easy. Be uh, uh, 21 inches because um, I didn't want any me mesh left over and I want a nice full wreath. And we're going to be doing kerfuffles, and you'll see why I did 21 inches. Okay, so this is the four. So we got, you know, we got a few, we got a bit left over. So you can add, you can maybe do 20 and one and a half, or maybe the outside 22. We just want to make sure you have enough mesh. So I do have a probably a couple pieces left on here. Alrighty, and now we're going to cut. 16 pieces of this cute pumpkin ribbon at 14 inches. So I'm going to use my measure buddy. If you don't have a measure buddy, you can use um, your cutting mat. Uh, you can use, cut a piece of cardboard. Um, 
at 14 inches and wrap it just like I am with the Measure Buddy. Um, the Measure Buddy is a tool that my husband and I invented and it measures anything from eight inches to 20 inches in length and you can bring it down in increments. So arm number one comes out to 14 inches and you'll see the little grooves as you're pushing in. It locks into that whatever inch you want and same with number two. So I kind of like 14 inches for ribbons. I don't know why. So I'm going to wrap my ribbon and we need 16. I am going to go four times around because this ribbon is, is fairly thick. It's a very heavy canvas ribbon. So we don't want it want um, too much bulk, bulk going around. Okay, so there's four. So, and then once you've got your ribbon, just fold it and we're gonna fold it. So there's my pieces. I haven't cut the ends because I really don't need to because I am going to dovetail this. So I'm gonna fold this over horizontally I am going to put my finger at about one inch from the end, just so all my dovetails are going to be the same angle cut. And I'm going to cut from the folded side up to the corner, outside corner, just like that. Okay, you have that. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. And it just saves you some time and a step. and not having to butt ribbon tails up and stuff. All right, and there we go. We got four ribbon tails. Yes, it's nice and easy. So I'm folding all my ribbons in half and getting them ready to go. So you need 16 of these. I pre-cut 12 already. And now I have 16. So I have them in two piles, piles of eight. And we're ready to, we're ready to put this together. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start on row one, which is, you'll see a one and you'll see lines going around the circumference here. That is row one. I am going to start where our hanging holes is just to the left or right. And we are gonna use the row hole on row one to the outside of the board. Okay, we're gonna put a piece of mesh in there and one ribbon tail. Okay, so we'll get this ready, just like that. Now you can do a ruffle, you can do a kerfuffle, you have a nice big long piece so if you want to do a ruffle you're going to do it curled down and then just scrunch right up the middle like that trying to um, do the ruffle with starting that the cut edge is facing down towards the table and finishing with the cut edge down towards the table so you can do a ruffle like that, or you can do a kerfuffle, which is, this one's my favorite. You take your 21 inch piece, uh, curl up. So that means when I let go, it's gonna curl up. So that's how I know cur teach curl up. I'm just gonna fold the bottom about halfway up the 21 inch piece mesh, and then bring the top just over the bottom piece. So you have a bit of a overlap there. Okay, now this is a big piece. So it's hard to let go and start at the bottom or top. So I'm gonna start and pinch it right in the middle. Okay, so when I let go, it's not gonna fly open, okay? And then I'm just gonna pinch it all the way to the top and then pinch going to the bottom. Okay, so this is what we call a kerfuffle. 
Alrighty. I am going, I know I see this fly. I'm going to go with my kerfuffle. I'm going to turn it downwards. So the cut edges here, you can see a little bit of strings here. I just made it worse. That's okay because you won't see that um, when we do the kerfuffle. There's no need to wood burn and all that stuff for this. You're going to take your ruffle or kerfuffle, put it right on the board between the hole and the outside of the board, right where you're pinching in the middle. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to put this cute ribbon on here and just come around the center. All right. We want to make sure our ribbon tails are even. I have my kerfuffle facing outwards. And once you have everything in place, pull nice and tight. Alrighty. Okay, so that is the very first piece. Here we go. We're going to skip this hole. We're going to go to the next hole. Do the same thing. Okay, curl up. Again, you, if you're going to do a ruffle, continue with doing that ruffle through the, throughout the whole wreath. Um, if not, you can do the kerfuffle and do that through the whole wreath. Okay, so I didn't get my I didn't get my ribbon prepared, so I'm just going to stick one of these clothespins, and that's why you get clothespins in your kit. They're just an extra set of hands. We're going to pleat that ribbon, make sure the tails are about the same size, take your clothespin off, put your ribbon right on top of the center of your mesh and come around the center of it again. Okay, before you make it really tight, you want to make sure everything is pretty much even because once you get it tight, it's really hard to fix anything. Um, you can cut off the zip tie and start again, but we don't want to do that. Yes, this mesh is super cute for this project. I did one very similar last year and everybody loved it. And everybody wanted a kit. So, but you can use any kind of orange mesh. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend like a poly burlap. Um, you would have to heat seal the poly burlap, even though it's a long piece. Um, if you don't heat seal or, or wood burn uh, poly burlap, the strings will continue all the time. Okay, put it again, just put it on top. And we're doing every other roll on roll one. And we're going to just, this is how the whole wreath is made, just like this. Because on row two, we are just going to go in opposite where we went on row one. And I would absolutely super appreciate if everybody shared this to their own Facebook pages. Um, there's a lot of people that don't really know about us, especially Canadians, and um, they're missing out. They're having FOMO. All right, one more piece I'm going to fold, and then the rest of my kerfuffles, I used my Bodabra and stuck a whole bunch in there, and then I pre-clipped a whole bunch here so you're not sitting there watching me fold mesh and stuff, so little faster for, for us. I believe this kit was $25. But it's, it's Halloween-y without being scary. So it's really, really super cute. And you could also add lights if you wanted to put a little, be a little extra. 
Um, you could add lights to it. You just tape the lights right to the board and they kind of get zip tied in as you're going around your wreath. Um, I normally have battery timered lights on my website, but they're back ordered and they've been back ordered forever, <laughs> but they are due to come in. I am using the Unique in the Creek character board and the Unique in the Creek vinyl. There is over 500 vinyl images and it just turns your, your frame and your sign into one piece. It's a very economical way for wreathing because you don't have to buy one of the metal signs or anything. Yes, raffia or a little, a little bit of greenery would be fun. You can just add that right in to the zip tie. So once, you, once you've zip tied it loose, you can stick some greenery or pull some raffia through. Um, yeah, you can add whatever you like. And then once you have everything in, everything looks good, just pull it tight. All righty. So you can see I just pre-made, goes just a little bit faster when you pre-made your, make your petals and it holds it. And the reason I'm kind of facing my mesh outwards is because we're going to put another row of mesh on row two and facing them outward gives the appearance of a lot larger wreath. Especially if you're selling wreaths, people see it, and it works out to be about 26 inches, and it only takes, well, for me, I can do this wreath in about half an hour, but that's me, and I've done over, I've done over a thousand wreaths of like, with like this. Um, but for a beginner, uh, I think a good time frame would be, give yourself about an hour and a half, and you don't have to rush. I could leave this project come back and know exactly where to start again. So you do not have to rush through this. And I don't know if you notice, I have to work upside down so you guys can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I think we are on the last, last poll on Uh, last year, I only put ribbon tails on row one, and it did look really cute. So if you, that video is still on my YouTube channel. Just type in pumpkin face. This year, I'm going to, uh, I'm still going to add ribbon tails on row two, only because this ribbon is so pretty with the glitter on it. So our little pumpkin for 2022 is styling. Rolled me out. That's a good one. Thank you. All righty. We are done. Sure, all these. All right, now we're going to go around and we're going to clip off all these zip tie tails. Okay, let's not worry about the ribbons and how, you know, they're all they're going to get wonky until we're actually done. You're going to take your wire nippers. You're going to go right down to the base of the zip tie and just cut off the tails. These are recyclable. So if you make a lot of bacon cream wreaths with zip ties, you want to recycle the tails because they'll probably come back to us to make the boards because <laughs> our boards made out of recycled material which is wonderful like yogurt containers and stuff like that I have I keep a little small can beside me and I just put the tails in there and once it gets full I just dump it into my plastic recycling bin it must be Facebook yeah all right so where we put the one on row one we're going to preload row two 
opposite. So we're going to go down and up, and but we're going to keep it open. So we are preloading open. So it's down and back up. I just lift it off the table, or you can flip it upside down. If you watched me yesterday, we're going to we're skipping every other one. You just want to make sure that the flat part of your zip tie head is facing in towards the middle of the two holes. Okay, so when you go to do them up, they're in the right way. Oops, we're doing every other one. So this is nice too, because you know if you missed, I missed a spot or anything, because if there's no zip tie there, um, you know you missed a spot. This one's a little more easier because we are doing every other. But when you're doing flowers, sometimes it gets a little crowded and you don't know if you got them all. You just have to flip it over and see where your zip ties are. And if you're missing a zip tie, there's your piece. Okay, so there we go. We're all loaded up. We are going to do the same fold. And we are going to use the same ribbon. We are going to put, take our kerfuffle, put it right in the middle. Now you do not have to uh, face it outwards, but I am going to face the ribbon outwards. Because this, if you, if you do it like this, it'll make it nice and full around your pumpkin's face. And then just do it up. Of course, you want to make sure that the ribbon tails are equal again. And do it up tight. Now I kind of like to pull these, the zip tight towards the back so the head is not, you don't see the head down there. And this is going to get quite full as we start putting these 21 inch pieces. And to answer somebody's question, now you see why I'm using 21 inch. So we're going to it's going to like kind of push on each other and fill this bad boy right up. So we want to push this back, put it right on top of your zip tie, put a clothespin on so we can do our ribbon. Again, we're still folding them up. And come around. Okay, pull that head towards the back a little so it's not visible on the front. And then go down with your wire nipper. And if you just close the wire nipper just a little bit and pull, it does work as a needle, like a needle nose plier and then snip it off. Oh, you guys haven't seen anything yet. I'm not even close to being done. This is gonna be fabulous. I think I like it with the extra more ribbon compared to last year's. It just gives them a little bit more color because we are gonna do a nice loopy um, bow with this ribbon. I'm just kind of pushing the one we just did to the side so they butt up against each other. And again, you can use um, pipe cleaners, but once you get the hang of the zip ties, some, at the beginning, sometimes it's hard. It feels like you have two left hands if you're right-handed. Um, but it's just very neat looking like this is your back. That's all your customer will see. And this definitely will fit between storm doors. Absolutely. Ooh, I have a link of them here. Now I use clothespins a lot. The, the, I just buy a pack of clothespins from the dollar store and they're just really great to have an, you know, kind of an extra set of hands. Now 
Now, I believe the kit is sold out. However, I'm going to try and get some more supplies. Um, and hopefully I can have it available for August. Like I said, I did have over 200 of these and they, they sold 200 of them sold out in, in less than a day. Almost done. Yes, this would be so. I think I might have put lights in him last year. Although I put a bow at the top, so I think it might be a her. If you did a, your loopy bow at the bottom, you could probably call it a him. <laughs> Character board is a lot of fun because there's so many images you can use and it's a lot less expensive than uh, buying signs and stuff. And they're very vibrant, the, 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 the uh, vinyls. All right, three more. And I'm not sure if some of you are aware, we do have a private group. Um, we call it the Can-Am VIP group. And I do let the VIPs know one day ahead of time what kits are coming out before the general public. So that's just a perk. And we also do kits just for the VIP group. And we will be starting a um, a coupon, or not coupon, a discount code for the VIP group very shortly to shop on Unique in the Creek. So it, it does have quite a bit of value. Um, Tina will pin in the comments or put in the comments the link for the VIP group should you want to join. It's myself, Michelle Redding from Monkey's Creations, Andrea Brown from Rancho Reese craft supply. Um, she's very, very good at grapevine. It's This group is not just unique in the creek. I have to say that explicitly because um, a lot of people think it's just unique in the creek. I do mostly unique in the creek. Dre does mostly florals, like centerpieces, grapevines, all that stuff. And Michelle does, Michelle does everything. <laughs> she does everything. Work forms, Dollar Tree forms. Uh, she comes up with some really cool stuff. So we would love to have any of you newbies. We have a weekly chit chat. We have a weekly wreath critique. One of us is designing weekly that, um, the general public does not see what we're doing, and it's usually something really cool and different. And that is called Can-Am VIP Connection. One more. We have one more, my friends. Yeah, this pumpkin wreath is so super cute. Just so super cute. Stuff her in there. All righty, that was it. Now 
have a go. I'm not going to go around. I'm just going to fix my mesh. So we want to kind of push it back. So it, it's a little bit more dense and you won't see the board and you just see his little cute face peeking out. I, I, I got a new charm on my bracelet and Mickey's foot keeps getting stuck. Okay, so this is what we got so far. I'm gonna push a lot of this mesh back. However, I gotta make the stem and we're gonna make a cute bow. So when I flip it over, that is the back. Okay, this is the center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put, even though this is going to be used as our hanging for a hanger, I'm also going to use this for the stem. So what I'm going to do is, maybe I'll go down. I'm going to go down just like that. And I'm just going to do it up the zip tie till you hear the clicking. Hear that? Then I'm going to take this piece of green cosmic tool that you get in the kit. You can, if you have mesh, you can use mesh, um, like normal deco mesh. Um, you get a 24 inch piece. I'm going to cut four inches. Uh, I'm going to, no, I'll cut four. I'm going to cut six inches off. This is going to be used as a, a leaf, okay? I'm going to take this cosmic mesh tool. It's very sparkly, it's really cute. And I'm just gonna roll it. Now you can take, if you want it to be even, you can use the cardboard insert of your mesh. And we're just gonna roll it. And as we roll it, you can see that the color gets more dense. Okay, slide it off. I'm going to put, and I'm just going to kind of fold it in because we're going to put this into the zip tie. However, I want to make a little leaf, so I'm going to put the clothespin on. I'm going to take this little piece of green and just kind of pinch it at the bottom here. So it forms a little leaf, okay? And that I am going to put right on top of the bottom of my stem here. Now, I want the, the folded part, I want it towards the back. So we're gonna be sticking our little stem in. So roll it and then pinch it so that the the um, end is at the back. We're going to stick it in to that zip tie I just put right into the center, like that. And then I'm gonna take this. Now you can use your clothespins. I'm gonna take this and just stick this one into the zip tie on top of the stem. And then I'm gonna pull it tight. Pull it right tight to the board. Should use the clothespin. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Pull it tight. Put that off. Got a little leaf coming out now. Like I said, if you want to, you can use. You can use um, a, just a piece of deco mesh, green deco mesh, or brown. And then we have to pull out all our ribbon tails, make them straight. And we're gonna make a bow. I'm gonna put a bow about maybe right to the side. You can also put a bow at the bottom if you wanna make them a boy. It's totally up to you. You go around, bring these tails. to the center. And same with row two.
fold it in and then we'll do row two. And then we're gonna make the bow. Now the bow I'm gonna make with my measure buddy. You can use just a piece of cardboard. You can use a bow maker if you have one. It's just a very simple, I call it a cheater bow. Michelle hates when I call it that. And we also have to put a hanger still on. Flip it over and go down and up and make a hanger here. Down, back up those two holes where you have your stem. Sorry about that. And you're gonna, if you're selling this, you're gonna put your business card or your, or your um, sticker on the back so the customer knows where to get your Christmas wreath, their Christmas wreath. And I fixed all those tails and I have to fix them again. Okay, <laughs> now let's make the, a, a cute bow. A cute loopy bow to put on her. So you're going to take your this uh, 0.625 inch 10 yard wired. This is wired ribbon. Okay, I am going to cut a piece at 24 inches. You can cut it longer if you wish. I think 24 is probably going to be a good size. This is going to be your tail. So fold it in half. Make sure both sides are each a little same length. We are going to take a zip tie and a pipe cleaner. I'm going to be using my measure buddy. I'm going to bring it down to 10 inches. So you can cut a piece of cardboard at 10 inches if you don't have a measure buddy. Um, this is the easiest way to do this type of bow. You're going to take your ribbon. We're going to start with it only halfway on the measure buddy. Okay, so 10 inches from here to here. I have it halfway. And I'm going to go around six times being once I hit the middle here, I'm going to move my thumb and that's one. Okay. I'm going to go around again with my thumb. That's two. And you can use your measure buddy for not just this, but any kind of bow, any kind of ribbon. multitasker. There's three. This gets twisted. I should have put it on my spool holder. That's four. Have patience, which I don't. That's five. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Although you can do as many times around as you want. If you want a really good loopy bow, you can keep going until your, you know, your ribbon's done. I wouldn't because it's kind of a waste of a ribbon. I think six times around is going to be um, just suffice. So one more time, and that is six. And if you have a spool holder, <laughs> use your spool holder. Then it won't twist like this. I want my loops flat, so. God, this was harder than the whole wreath. Okay, six. Six!
Okay, we're just going to cut it out here. Okay, so we have six on, we'll have six loops here, six loops here. You're going to carefully slide it off. Okay, if you just bring this down once and then it's loose and you can slide it off. Okay, keep it stacked like this. Just going to gently fold it in half to see where the center is. It's right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my zip tie, put it right underneath these tails I made, this tail here. Now you can see the seam at the top here from where I cut it. We're going to flip it over so we don't see that. And you're just going to put it right on the center. That's why you want to make sure where your center is because we want each side of our loops the same size. All right, and then we're going to go around the zip tie. It won't stop sliding on me. Okay, around the zip tie. Tight, but not too tight that you can't slide a pipe cleaner. So we're going to flip this over because this is the front of our bow. So this is why it's a cheater bow. <laughs> I don't know why it's cheater because I just did it different than using a, a uh, bow, bow maker. I'm going to take my pipe cleaner, just slide it to about the middle, because this is where we're going to attach to the board. And tighten so that the head of the zip tie is at the back of your bow. And pull it really tight. And snip that off. And now we're going to start opening it. So I pull one. We're going to pull them in all different directions. And pull each side out. So you'll have six loops on both sides. And you can fix your bow once you get it on the on the board. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now don't be scared to give it good tugs and stuff. It is zip tied. It's not going to come apart. So it's just a clever way to make a bow without having to use an actual bow maker. And you can do this with cardboard too. One, two, three, four, five, one is stuck in there. There it is, six. So we have six on each side. I'm gonna take my wreath again. Now you can place your bow wherever you want. I might put, I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to flip it over. And like I said, you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it right over top, this, zip, this zip tie, the two ends of the pipe cleaner. Cut this little piece off so it doesn't show. There we go. So I'm just going down one hole, down the other. Now you can pull it right tight to the border, you can just leave it a little looser. It's totally up to you. So there's where I put it. Give it a couple twists. And I wouldn't cut this off until you're absolutely positive that's where you want to put your bow. And we're going to open up these loops. We want the tails coming down like, I want my tails going down like that. And we'll curl them.
I could have probably even did 11 inches for my loops. open them up so they may have a nice full bow. Isn't she lovely? They're intertwined here. And I, like I said, if you want a fuller bow, you can do more than six. And if you want it longer, you can do more than 10 inches. I am now gonna ro just roll my little Hold that didn't work. I'll just curve them with my finger like you do for balloons. Like I said, it is wired. And I think my bow needs just to be a little bit looser. I think it's too close to the board. I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit. And then I will cut. Okay, then we're going to cut the ends. And stick them back down the hole. Just like that, you can add a little bit of glue in the hole there to keep those down. If you if you want your stem longer, if you roll it on an angle, you, it'll actually be a little bit longer, almost like a cone shape. So you can do it like that. Have my leaf sticking out. And this bow, I probably won't, I'll probably have to fix it right on my door. And there we go. I will have to fix all the other ribbons, of course, again, but I do that on my door once I'm about to take a picture. Double up the mesh here so it's thick. And there we go. Isn't she super cute? Right? <laughs> now, once I figure it, put, do all my ribbons, it'll look much nicer, but like I said, you have, I have quite a bit of mesh left. Maybe I could have did 22 inches. I just, I just get worried that, you know, people are not going to have enough, but I have much more than 16 inches left because if you add another inch and we need 16 pieces, um, I have 29 inches, 30 inches here. So I would have had plenty to do 20, 22, which would make it even fuller. So it's totally up to you. Or do 21 on the outside and calculate the eight on the inside and do them longer too. The longer the uh, ruffles are, the more it will cover the board. Because the inside, even though this mesh is a little bit pricey, the inside of the mesh is a value mesh. As you can see, it's really see-through. What you're paying for is this snow drift at the edges. So please don't use this mesh for poofs or anything because if you're making poofs with this mesh, you are losing what you just paid for. So your poof is the value mesh is what you're gonna be seeing. So only use this mesh for ruffles and for if you're doing poofs and you wanna do an accent on top, use a inexpensive orange mesh and then go back in with some ruffles on top of your poofs with this mesh and you'll make a nice really really full wreath but this one turned out super super cute with my little stem like i said if you want your stem a little longer just roll it on an angle which i'll probably do let me let me tr show you i'm gonna redo just, it's so easy to fix things. You just snip off the zip tie. And I am going to make it a little longer. So let's see if I fold it in half. 
I'm going to start from the corner. And roll it like that. We want the corner. It is much longer. So we can put it in like that. Get our leaf. Oh, I have to put another zip tie in. Although I can just use the, the hanger. It's already in there. I'm just going to slide this in right at the end. Slide my little leaf in. Or you can just, if you don't want to put the leaf in, you can just use the whole amount for the stem. Pull that tight. And then it let go on me, but <laughs> you guys get the gist. <laughs> if you do it on an angle, it will be a little bit longer. Anyways, that is it. Yeah, probably, Teresa. I was just going off the, off the cuff there. So that's it, guys. That's my cute little pumpkin. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And thanks for joining me again. I will be doing another tutorial probably tomorrow for the last kit that we had available, which is on the oval board. And it's welcome to our patch. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me and have a wonderful night. Bye, everybody.